social hip hop cut up piece that had a big influence on us. And now, here's Johnny. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your. Here is a bulletin. Here is a bulletin. So the task is to redefine a sane psychic equilibrium for human consciousness. I call that the balance between independence and interdependence. It's to rebalance our emphasis on the I and the I, which are actually the same thing. Sometimes one can use sludgy black dark energy to, to fuel one and get some new ideas going. So I started to wonder if maybe films like An Inconvenient Truth and even Timber uh, had gone as far into mainstream consciousness as that approach was likely to be able to. Even images which had packed emotional charge like drowning polar bears were losing their ability to shock and people were not changing their behavior very much. So this made me feel, as an environmentally motivated artist, that I needed to update my work. It wasn't fully in the zone anymore. We needed new vehicles, we needed new strategies. We needed to update and evolve what we were doing. It was encouraging that eco-consciousness could be felt as a, a growing wave, but it seemed clear that change was just going too slowly to achieve very much. How soon would it be before a collapse of the environment became irreversible? Every estimate we heard seemed to bring it nearer and nearer the day when it's this great tragedy, the greatest unimaginable tragedy, was coming closer and there were a number of horrifyingly plausible scenarios which seemed to be getting nearer and nearer. And unless things change, I think we probably all know it, it's, it's still not looking too good unless we get some radical change in human behavior going. Otherwise we're going down the slot and taking most of the planet with us, which will be a pity. So the problem is, it looks as if we're not going to change our behavior much because we act selfishly. Like, maybe I'll turn off a few lights, but why should I give up my car if my next door neighbor isn't going to give up theirs? We each tend to sort ourselves out, to prioritize ourselves, priority one, selfishly. And acting selfishly means acting for ourselves. It means acting according to our concept of the self which in this day is a somewhat narrow concept, I'd submit. I'm sure many of us feel that some vital aspects of connection to nature and connection to each other are perhaps weaker today than in other eras, other times past. Maybe we feel we've lost something very valuable there. We need to replace it. We need to redevelop it. We need to redevelop a wider concept of the self Death needs time for what it kills to grow in. For our poop's sweet sake, you stupid, vulgar, greedy, ugly American death sucker. If we had a wider concept, then our definition of selfishness would change and we would act differently. So I believe that this key evolutionary concept of the self arises from interconnectedness. Interconnectedness is the realization that we as living, conscious, beings are all connected in a web of intelligent life. Shake. So out of that I felt I could focus my direction down to a single question. The question is how does one make art which helps promote the realization of interconnectedness? I felt that was at least a good question but a hard one don't know the answer then and I don't know it fully now but we're, I'm groping we're all groping towards a solution to that question I would suggest as artists so to try and get a handle on it I turn to game theory which is a scientific technique that attempts to model behavior mathematically game theory like many useful items was originally sponsored 
by the American military establishment. Let's hear it for the military industrial combine. Without them, we'd have no LSD and no internet. So they get it right sometimes by mistake. So the US used game theory as a weapon to outthink the USSR in the Cold War. There's a whole story behind that, which is uh, brilliantly described in a, a BBC Two documentary called The Trap by Adam Curtis. And he shows how the valid and valuable insights of uh, scientists like evolutionist Richard Dawkins and before him, originator of game theory, a guy called John Nash, were widely influential but they devastatingly ignore key aspects of human consciousness. They ignore cooperation, altruism, they ignore love. This is an example of what I call paranoid science. There's a film, a Hollywood film called A Beautiful Mind, which tells the story of how John Nash was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia when he laid the foundations of game theory. And this illness, mental illness is clearly manifested in his scientific theories which have been so influential on modern world views. This is paranoid science in which truth is twisted through an ego-fueled agenda to manufacture justifications in much the same way as religion is often, often accused of doing. My friend Tantric Billy says, it is a fully mechanistic view, something that is immensely damaging when forced onto the fragile, developing embryo of human intelligence. The view of the paranoid science version of game theory is that fundamentally cooperation does not work because it seems that no one can really trust anyone else. But if we rewind, game theory actually has much more to offer than its paranoid sponsors, the American military, believe. Game theory attempts to understand behavior through game models, animal behavior and human behavior, our own behavior. Just eat. And that's my conclusion from game theory. Life on this planet may be dependent on the success of the human meme for cooperation. Cooperation arises directly from interconnectedness, thus practicing and helping spread the interconnected cooperation meme set is the most effective way to take action for the survival of ourselves and the planet. And uh, I came up last night with a, a silly acronym which is CANFIT, C-A-N-F-I-T, and that stands for cooperation arises naturally from interconnectedness, totally. Thank you for listening. One love.